Hello YouTube, welcome back to my channel. I am the Average Doomsday Prepping Dude. This is the next video in my Bird 92 Do-It-Yourself series focusing on how to remove your trigger as well as the trigger spring in the frame and replacing it with whatever you want. The process is the same if you're putting in a Wilson Combat short reach trigger, an Inox trigger, this is a steel trigger upgraded over the factory polymer one. Uh, the process is the same, or if you want to replace your trigger spring with a Wilson Combat Competition Spring Kit, this is how you would do all of that. So before we get started, you're going to need a couple tools. I use a 564 inch hex screwdriver. Mine has a little notch at the end there. Um, if yours does not have a notch, I recommend making the little fancy fish hook out of a paper clip that I've shown you how to make in a prior video. Uh, you also should have a magnetic parts bin holder thing um, cup whatever this is uh, it's like a dollar at Harbor Freight or free if you uh, have one of their their free coupons I highly recommend this for your work area to put springs screws and all the parts going to be taken off today this is going to be very very handy um, in prior videos I've shown how to remove the trigger bar which we will need to be taking off and I use both both of these tools here for that, as well as you're going to need to be able to take off the slide stop because the spring on the slide stop actually retains the pin right there. If you've ever wondered what that was, you can't take the trigger out without taking both of these off. So I'm just going to do that. You can watch my prior videos to, to learn how to do that in detail um, because some of them can be a little tricky. Uh, but when you see me do this in real time, it's actually fairly simple um, when you know what you're doing. So once you have the slide stop off and the trigger bar off, there's really three components left. There is the trigger pin, there's the spring inside here, and the trigger itself. The trigger pin comes in from this side of the pistol in that way. So when you have it, uh, when you have everything off, you want it in this configuration. Just put your finger over here because you don't want the trigger spring flying out. Just put your 564 inch through the pin, knock that out. Pin is just going to fall down, put that in there. So you can actually see that the trigger spring is now in my hex screwdriver, um, acting like the trigger pin. I'm just going to pull that out and the spring kind of just falls out put that aside and now the trigger is out okay so once you have everything fully disassembled out of the frame these are your three main components you got your trigger your trigger pin and your trigger spring basically what's happening is this pin seats in here as if it's in the frame this would go in like this and then this comes through so that's kind of what you have to do when you're putting it back into the frame here it's actually not that bad um, once you know how to do it. Uh, the configuration or orientation of your trigger spring doesn't matter. Um, it can go either way. It's actually uh, kind of ingenious what Broda did is if your trigger spring actually breaks, say one side breaks off when you're in the field, you can just flip it around because this part here on looking at the pistol this way is what rests on the trigger bar like so. So that wing is actually what goes on the trigger bar, but this portion, this side of it, because it just rests on the frame in here, it actually doesn't require the full hook of the pistol. It just actually needs a little bit of the arm. So, um, Again, the orientation on this doesn't matter, but if your spring breaks, you don't have to completely throw it away. You can use it um, in an emergency situation. Um, I wouldn't recommend it if you uh, have the option to change it because these are like two bucks or three bucks, whatever it is. But if you, you, know, you need to do it that way, you can do that in an emergency. That's why we're here. This is the Doomsday Prepping Dude um, channel for a reason. So the way I put this back together is I actually have the trigger in this orientation uh, just drop the trigger down and kind of eyeball the hole for the bottom pin uh, you can't really probably see it on camera but I can 
Uh, I'm going to put the pin in from the other side. I'm not going to put the pin in all the way. I'm going to pin it, put a pin in so it stops and it's flush with the inside of the trigger bar or trigger right there. And my 564 inch screwdriver is actually metallic or magnetic. So I can actually just pick it up like so, drop it in. I actually pull the trigger part of the way just because I like having it that way it's easier. I just push it in like so once it's in and I give the pin a push from the back like that. So once that's in, I'm just reversing what I did with the trigger bar and the slide stop, which I showed how to do in prior videos. I'm just gonna do it again so you can see how easy this can be done and quickly it can be done once you have the right knowledge and tools. That's in. This is gonna go back in as well. And once that's in, I'm gonna put the slide stop back in. Again, the slide stop video will show you the correct orientation on how to get everything in easier. I'm not gonna explain how to do it now. So now, once this is all in, slide back on, I can test function and the trigger works perfectly. So if you like what you see, like and subscribe, please. And I will be having a couple more of these do-it-yourself videos just on the actual parts themselves before I get into my frame modifications. I've shown you how to do beaver tail or I've shown beaver tails, my undercuts of the trigger guard, rounding off the trigger guard. I'll be doing separate videos of those. So if you want to see those in the future, again, please like and subscribe. And again, to know how to do the slide stop as well as the trigger bar videos, uh, those are already in my playlist. So watch those as well. Thank you very much.